This is part one, so I'm going to be starting with Sapphire Adjust. Channel Switcher. This lets you swap, copy or mix the red, green, blue and alpha channels however you like. I'm going to add this onto my adjustment layer. So already I can see these settings here. I assume what these do is let you switch the channel for another. The arrows are pointing to each channel. So for example, I could change the blues to red. So if I click this and select blue, all the reds have now been switched or replaced by blue. So before, as you can see, there is a lot of red around my image and after. Each of these channels have something called scale and offset. So I think the scale is the brightness and the offset is the darkness. If I wanted to expose the reds a little more, I could increase it or I could decrease it. So less red, which brings out the blues and also the greens. This kind of reminds me of the tint effect with more control. So if I just increase the offset dark blues, for example, it's now got a blue tint if that counts, but with more control because there are more settings. Clamp Chroma. This limits how intense the colors can get so they don't become overly saturated for broadcast, which I don't really care about, but either way, I'm going to add it onto my adjustment layer. I think it's a fairly simple effect. You've got clamp chroma here, just determines how much color there is. So zero makes it monochrome. One is the default value. I'm not really understanding how scale chroma works because when I increase it, it just makes it more saturated or overly saturated, mostly by bringing out the reds. So perhaps I could do this, increase that and decrease this close to zero. So we could go 0.13, maybe leave the scale around two and clamp luma. I believe this stands for luminance, which is the, which are the brighter parts. So the window here, her face, if I increase it, it gets brighter. If I decrease it, it gets darker. Duotone. This turns your clip into two colors based on brightness. Dark colors become one color, bright areas become another. You may have seen this effect on posters and I think it's very commonly used by Photoshop editors. I th think it was called two-tone or was it something else? I'm, I'm not sure. So I could decrease the softness so you understand what I mean. If I go zero, this leaves my image with just two colors and I can change them. So I could go for a red or a pink and it looks like this threshold here to control the, I don't really know, I guess how much there is, how much it spreads perhaps, or would that be the softness? I don't really know. Either way with softness, it doesn't really look good when it's set to a higher value. Works best around zero, depending on obviously, you know, what you're trying to achieve. So yeah, I like zero. It looks awesome. Mix with source if you want to blend it in a little instead of having it really prominent. Looks cool like this. Gamma. Adjusts how bright or dark the midtones of your image are without crushing blacks or blowing out whites. I would mainly use this effect to control the contrast because when I decrease the gamma, it brings out the colors. It looks way more red than before. And it also makes the darks darker. I know I'm the one that just read that description, but I don't really understand this effect. To me, it looks like contrast and saturation. So if I decrease the value for the gamma, it creates a very strong contrast. And also it brings out the colors, mostly the reds. So if I were to increase it, it would have the opposite effect. Instead, I'd get a flatter image and also something that looks very overexposed. There's also these settings for the red, green and blue, just like before. So you can control each channel individually. It's got to be contrast. I can't really think of anything else because if I decrease the gamma for the red, or should I say if I increase it, it looks more flat. For now, I'm just going to consider this an experimental effect because I don't understand it. So I'm going to move on. Hot spots highlights only the brightest areas of your clip while keeping their original colors. It's funny because I've used this effect a few times, but just like gamma, I don't really get it. If it looks good, it looks good. That's just the mentality I have with these effects. I will say though, you can create some really cool transitions using the threshold. 
And I did make a tutorial on this, so if you do want to check it out, the link is in the description below. Usually what I'd do is I'd keyframe it to 1 at the start, head a few frames ahead, and then decrease it, maybe back to 0, and that would create a reveal transition. Um, sort of like a fade in, but better. You can also pair it with the blur input, which I have used as well before. Instead of adding another blur effect, like Gaussian Blur separately, you can just use Blur Input. Hue Sat Bright, which lets you change the hue, which is the color, saturation, which is the intensity, and the brightness of your clip. It's very likely that you might have used this effect before, or something similar that's built into After Effects or Premiere Pro. Hue Shift controls the hues, so I can move it up or I can move it down and keyframe it as well. Create some really cool rainbow effects or I can control the saturation, lower means monochrome, and the brightness is, well, the brightness. Invert flips the colors of your clip. Very simple. If there's black, it turns white. If it's white, it turns black. And whatever else there is. My clip seems to have a loss of blue, so if I click invert blue, the effect is very strong. You can invert multiple channels at the same time, so I could do invert green, and also invert blue. This is a very good effect if you want to add one frame glitches to your edits, so keep that in mind. Monochrome converts your clip to black and white while letting you control how each color affects the final image. And we're back to using red, green and blue once again, so I assume this lets us control the... what would it be? Chrome... the colors? The chromatic... Uh, I don't really know what I'm talking about. The saturation for each channel, at least that's what I thought uh, the settings would let us do, but I don't think so because if I change it to 1, 1, 1, it's still monochrome. So if I did 0, 0, 0, it's black. Again, I don't really know how I would use this because if I increase it for each one, uh, starting with the red, I yeah, it's very overexposed, I don't really get it. So let me try green, okay, I mean it's still monochrome, but slightly different. So if I try blue, same as green, just slightly different, less contrast. I think I'll stick to hue sats bright or even hotspots, perhaps gamma. I don't really like this effect, so let's move on. OCIO transform? I have no idea what this means, but apparently it converts your footage from one color space to another using professional color management. Again, another effect that I'm going to completely skip because we don't need to know this. I say we, as in people who make edits. If you're editing a film, then this might be helpful, but for most of us, it's not. I initially thought this would work like the transform effect or warp transform, but no, it's completely different and very irrelevant to what we do. So we're going to skip this. Quad tone maps the brightness of your clip to four different colors. I've never used this before, so let's try something. Let's go color zero to red. Color 1, let's go for blue or purple. Color 2, yellow or green. And color color 3, leave it out white for now. It kind of reminds me of that rainbow frog, if you remember that meme. Quad tone. I'll keep that effect in mind if I ever do want to make a scene that looks very psychedelic. Because this is working really well. And what's great is that there is softness for each color and also brightness. When it says softness, is it like the one that we saw earlier for duotone? Only one way to find out, if I set it all to zero. Yes, well, kind of. It's not exactly zero, but it's close to it. And it did achieve a similar effect to duotone. I can also adjust the brightness for each color. So color two, which is, no, let's go color zero, which are the reds. If I increase the at bright, which is probably just the brightness, it begins to spread even more. Yeah, so around here seems to be the sweet spot. After around 0.35, it doesn't really work. Not bad, a very unique effect. So if you do want more colors to mess with, just like with Duotone, I would use Quad Tone. Oh wait, that makes so much more sense now. I didn't even realize that it's called Quad Tone meaning four, Duo meaning two. How did I completely miss that? Anyways, we're gonna move on to save the embarrassment. Show bad colors. This highlights colors that are outside a safe or allowed range. I don't get it. I really don't. So let's mess around with the settings, see what happens. Ooh, that looks awesome. So that's minimum and then maximum. I don't know what this does. I will be honest, I don't know what I'm doing. I think it's another effect that you can use however you like. Threshold. 
turns parts of your image completely on or off based on brightness with optional softness. I feel like this is a copy of another effect which we've already covered. It looks the same and it works the same. There's threshold, there's softness. The only difference is that the description is slightly different. I mean, I'm messing around with the effects. It looks kind of awesome. Then again, I don't really understand how I would use it. Maybe if I create masks or I don't know, try and be experimental, think outside the box, who knows. Tint adds one color to the dark areas and another color to the bright areas of your clip. A very cool stylistic effect which I have used before but it's been a very long time so I don't really remember. So I'm going to tint the lights for this first color. Let's use the eyedropper on the hair. So already I can control that. And tint darks is on the blacks. Source saturation is just the saturation if I want more. Increase if I want less. Decrease. Scale light probably means brightness so higher means brighter, lower means darker. And then there's the offset darks, which is just the darker parts. So if I go lower, there is more contrast, but also you'll notice that the colors pop out a lot. And that's probably because of the eyedropper tool that I used on the hair. Let's manually change this to something else. So tint darks, let's go for yellowy green. I don't really know what color that is. That's looking very flat. So what if I were to switch these around, let me copy this. So all I'm doing is flipping them around. And here's how it looks. That's awesome. Tritone. This maps the dark, mid and bright areas of your clip to three different colors. So hold on, this is basically the same as Duotone and Quadtone, except it's limited to three colors. Okay, I'm just going to pick random colors, see how this looks. So color one, color two and color zero, sure. It looks terrible, but the difference is this is limited to three colors, whilst Quad is limited to four and Duo is limited to 2. That covers everything within the Adjust category using the Sapphire plugin. Thank you to my monthly supporters as always for your continued support. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.